Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm just Joe, no title, and I'm so glad that you joined me for the Lord's Word of God today. And today we celebrate Yeshua, Jesus, Alpha and Omega, and there is no other. Amen? Amen. And today's message is about why God permits things to happen that we think should not happen. I want to share three examples with you of things that happened that could not be stopped. The first is about a man who gets killed. And prior to him dying, there's information that was sent to the police department that this man was going to be killed by a group of people. And the police couldn't do anything about it until it actually played out. They had to let it play out, but they could monitor it so that they could arrest the right people if it actually went down. And it did. And they arrested the people. And they were convicted. They could not stop what happened. The second is a personal experience that happened to me. When I was a young youth, my dad beat me severely. And I can remember looking up at the step and seeing my mother and thinking to myself, why doesn't she stop him? I did not understand why she did not try to stop him at that time. But now as an adult and having a lot of life experience and the Holy Spirit helping me to understand that had she stopped him, he would have beat her and then he would have came back to my room and beat me too. So she could not stop it. The third incident is the one that you and I know very well. Jesus Christ is being crucified on the cross. And at one point he yells out, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? It was because the father could no longer look at the sins of the world on his son on that cross. It broke his heart. And when Jesus had died and the soldiers took a spear and stabbed him to make sure that he was dead, Blood and water came out. And the water came out because Jesus' heart was broken. Because the Father and the Son were apart. It was the first time they were ever apart. And the only time they will ever be apart. So brothers and sisters, if God had stopped the crucifixion, there would be no forgiveness of sins. No eternal life for those who accept Jesus as their Savior. He could not stop it to save you and me from our sins. So he had to let it play out. You see, the explanation is God must let things play out to test the offenders and the victims. So to look at a perfect example in the Bible, let's turn to the book of Job, chapter 1. We'll start reading verse 8. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? Now here we find out that Job is the most righteous person on the planet. But we know that God allows the devil to take all of his possessions and even all of his children die. And ultimately, he allows the devil to inflict Job with pain and suffering, physical pain and suffering, with boils from the bottoms of his feet to the top of his head. And when his friends come to see him, they don't even recognize him. And so Job, being this righteous man, wants to question God Almighty. So he does. And so turn with me to, to chapter 42. And in chapter 41, God admonishes 
Job and puts the fear of God in him. And then Job says to the Lord in chapter 42, verse 6, Therefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. And you have to do the same if you have been angry with God. Jesus will never forsake us. And he gives us more grace to endure the suffering. And the suffering that we endure does not compare to the glory that we will have. Turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 5, and we'll read verse 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And what this means is, if somebody wronged you, you don't take vengeance on that person. You let God do it, and God does it. Amen? Amen. Turn with me to the last passage, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We'll start reading in verse 8. And these are examples that God gives us. And nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents, nor complain as some of them also complained, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now all of these things happen to them as examples, and they are written for our admonishment. Now this shows the power of God. You can see in the first instance, 23,000 people die in one day because of sexual immorality. And the others are complaining about God. They're angry with God. And it angers God. And he kills them. Many of them die because it angered God. You don't want to do that, brothers and sisters. Some people accuse God of being the offender instead of the person who has done that horrible thing. God will not stand for that. They are accusing the Almighty God of wrongdoing. It is a form of blasphemy because God can do no wrong. God makes the rules. Remember the saying, the man with the gold makes the rules. People have to learn not to blasphemy the Almighty God. Your heart must be right with God. Brothers and sisters, God created us. He brought us into this life and breathed breath into our nostrils.